Did you ever get told by older partners to buy a house that you're going to grow into that you're going to be able to afford later? No, I did not. But I know people who have had that experience. Yeah, I have. I, I remember them telling me that. And that's one thing that stuck with me because now that I'm, I'm a little bit you know, smarter with my finances, I, I think back to that advice. And that's like the worst advice you can give someone ever. <laughs> but you know, if that's their vantage point, like that's their experience, then that's all they know to tell people. But I completely agree. Like if you can't afford it, then probably should not get it. Yeah. Honestly, I think that, you know, you know, housing and transportation and food are like the three biggest expenses that most people have in their budgets. And I would say, get below what, especially the banks tell you that you can afford because right. the banks were telling us, even with our, you know, at that point, 470, because about 200 of the $670,000 of debt that we have is our mortgage. But it's so like $470,000 in student loans. And they were like, yeah, 800,000. Like, right. I, I wouldn't be able to buy anything else. Like, what am I going to eat? Like, do I yeah. eat just the, like what's going on? Right. So I think paying attention to the big expenses, especially like your house, not buying, you know, the, the house that you're going to grow into or whatever, but buy, you know, enough house for you to be comfortable. But if you can keep that expense lower and, you know, still be comfortable, then you're going to be able to make a lot more progress in your finances because you don't have so much of it tied up in the living expenses.